from Midtown Manhattan. The Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production. Made possible by Hortonworks, We Do Hadoop, and Wham Disco, Hadoop Made Invincible. And now your co hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, we're back here live in New York City. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. We're actually creating an event called Big Data NYC, which is sitting right outside of Hadoop World and Strata Conference, Big Data Week here in New York City. I'm John Furrier with, with my co-host Dave Vellante. We're joined with Quinton Clark, Corporate Vice President of Microsoft. Um, welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Um, yesterday, you guys were really leading the news on the on the trending alerts on our on our uh, CrowdSpots program. Where we'd monitor all the the chatter and mm -hmm. the conversation and the thought and and uh, the uh, the relationship with uh, HD Insight got a lot of buzz yesterday, really led the news cycle even in today's keynote. That's great to hear. Uh, so congratulations on that. Uh, good call by getting that out early. You got the pre-show uh, buzz. Um, and then obviously today the, the big conversation is, is the data platforms, right? So mm -hmm. talk, about, talk about what you guys are doing here real quick and then we'll jump into some of the, the specific questions we have. Yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, so just, just to start and set, set some higher level context, um, you know, we're, we're here because we're super committed to Hadoop, of course, and we're, we're working on, um, you know, product offerings in the cloud and, and our partnership with Hortonworks to ensure that Hadoop is really available for all of our customers, right? They, we almost have a, I would call it a responsibility uh, to help the Windows ecosystem benefit from everything that Hadoop has to offer. And so we've been working uh, tremendously hard on that. And then, as you noted, we announced yesterday the general availability of our HD Insight um, product offering as part of Azure, which is our Hadoop uh, in the cloud. So obviously, you guys have a huge install base. In fact, you know, we were joking the other day, Microsoft's earnings came out, and it's always the, you know, the negative press on the whole Balmer thing, and, and people are like, oh boy, Microsoft's really hurting for billions and billions of dollars in cash flow. Um, so you guys are obviously not hurting from a business standpoint. Huge install base, certainly the enterprise, right, which really is looking at retooling. We're just talking about software-defined data center, and with Azure, you guys are positioned perfectly to extend out your leadership from an existing enterprise into the cloud, which then enables a lot of the big data applications. So the question mm -hmm. on everyone's mind is, okay, on the enterprise grade um, Hadoop, what does that data platform look like? What's your vision around that? And, and what do customers do with you guys to get started? How are, they, how are they road mapping out to the cloud and big data? Yeah, well, it's a great question. And you know, Hadoop is a cornerstone of big data, but it's not the entire structure of big data, right? If you think of a cornerstone as one part of a, of a greater structure. The, the work we're doing to make sure Hadoop is enterprise grade, it's around security and, and Windows integration and tools integration. And we're contributing a lot. I mean, we've put in thousands of hours of development and tens of thousands of lines of code into, into Hadoop, not just to make it work great on Windows, but just to make Hadoop great, right? And you know, there is a, there is a foundational piece where customers will get started and then grow from there. And, and as you noted, we have um, Microsoft SQL Server's most widely deployed database in the world. And helping those professionals also start to embrace the big data phenomenon and embrace Hadoop is also a big part of a big part of the journey for us. So, Quinn, you got Microsoft customer; they're they're, they're enterprise ready. You guys have been in the business for decades, uh, so they have an expectation for yep. availability, reliability, performance. They have an experience in their mind as to what they're going to get when they adopt a Microsoft product. Compare that traditional Microsoft product with where you're at with the Microsoft products for. Hadoop, are we, is it parity? Are we still got a little ways to go, still got a long ways to go? Can you describe that? Well, I mean, a big part of our effort to, to get the HD Insight to GA was to get it to that enterprise expectation, mm -hmm. right? Security integration, tools integration, um, the work we've done to make Hadoop work great on Windows is a, is a lot about making sure that it has that enterprise servability. There's another piece of it, which is integration with the rest of the, the platform, right? There, you know, one of the things I was talking about this morning at the keynote was about reaching a billion people with the value of big data, right? And, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a, th a provoking thought in a way because what you really want at the end of the day is for anyone who can benefit from having the information available to them and being able to understand what it, what it may mean and have that conversation and dialogue with the data to be able to do that. And so whether the data is in Hadoop or it's in our relational database or it's coming from sources like OData, we're trying to make sure we funnel all that data in a way that allows people to start to build the kinds of BI and analytics models that let them understand what it, what it means. So, so I, I, I think I told you I was listening to the keynote, but I wasn't yeah. watching, I was doing some other stuff, and I heard the billion, I, it got me. And usually when you hear numbers like that, you think, okay, it's phone, right? It's the, it's the, it's the data on my phone, that's how I'm going to get to a billion. But then, you know, 
I listened and said, okay, no, they're not talking about that. Yeah. Talking about Excel, essentially, in Office. So mm -hmm. there's a billion Office users, right? Like most of them, I would presume, use Excel in some way, shape, some way, or form, shape form, right? Yeah. Maybe half, I don't know, maybe more than half, maybe a little <laughs> bit less than half, but a lot, you know? Um, so is the idea that you'll put the power of, of big data into Excel and then people like I can just use it? I'm a yeah, reasonably in, proficient in Excel office, user. And, and there's, it, you make a great observation, like there, we're gonna, there's more than a billion people that are gonna participate in big data in a passive way. You're participating in big data when you're driving your car, you're yeah, participating right. when you carry around your phone, right? What I'm talking about is, a, is the more active participation where you're curious as a human about something and then something's able to help make you smarter in that space. So one of the things that we're looking at, even for example, is in the sports arena, right? We're, we're, we're actually talking to a couple of the, the, the large US-based um, sports leagues and saying, would you like a power Q&A model, which is this thing we can do natural language interrogation of big data sources? Would you like a power Q&A model over your data set? for you know, the fantasy league fans and just fans in general. And, like, and there's a sort of pause and then, they, and then you walk them through what that could mean and of course they do, right? So there'll be consumers, if you will, of big data in that arena, but are they using Excel? No, not, not really. <laughs> they're, just, they're, just, they're just participating, right? So okay, so what's that experience going to be like? I, I'm going to be able to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Can I do that today? Um, we actually have some models with some yeah. of these data sets, and, um, and I won't go into the details because we're not sort of that far along yet with these customers, but let's just say I have, I have fantasy teams that I'm doing pretty well with, in part because my ability to really have the data, have a conversation with the depth of data, to really understand what these players' capabilities are and what conditions and who's on the bench at any given time, given weather conditions and which stadium they're in over history and all that, it, it's been good. So I can play Moneyball in fantasy sports is really what's going yeah, on. Yeah, and, and, and you know, but instead of having an analyst have to, have to sit and understand which columns mean what, you just walk up and you just ask questions, right? Like, so the consumer side, I mean, you're grinning ear to ear. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's interesting, right? It's fun. Yeah, wait. Hey. In the business side, it's transformational, right? Um, we have, of course, as you might imagine, models that we use for our own business. I have it for my own en engineering work. I have it for, for the business that I run. And our ability to gain insight in real time and really interact with the information to understand what, what may be done with it is very different uh, having using these tools. So why did you guys decide not to do your own Hadoop distro? Um, take us back to, to that decision. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, and primarily our focus has been in improving the Apache core, right? And, yeah. and by doing that, all of the great work that we've been doing to make Hadoop work great on Windows and to make Hadoop great is finding its way into all of the distributions as a result. And our partnership with Hortonworks was just such that it just made sense to let them to let them lead HDP into Windows and our customers were happy with that. And, and so we're kind of in a win-win-win situation where they're able to continue to push and have, and have that um, cross-platform distribution capability. We're able to give our customers a solution and, and keep up with the cadence of the, of the industry. How about the data portion of, of, of big data? I mean, you guys obviously have you know, robust apps, tools, middleware, database. Mm. You, have a lot of, you also have a lot of data. Um, at Microsoft? Yes, at Microsoft. Um, how are you making that data accessible to your community? Um, are, how are you monetizing that? Are you monetizing that? Do you have plans to monetize that? Um, this is a lot of valuable information that's public or quasi-public or you own yeah. um, that doesn't violate privacy. I'm sure there's lots that does and you can't put that out in the public domain, but there's mm. plenty that, that doesn't, whether yeah. it's traffic information or this is endless list of things. What are you doing? What's the data strategy? Yeah, well, that's a great question. Um, you know, I'll just give a couple of examples of the kinds of things that, that we're, we've done and, and, uh, and some direction that we're taking. Right? A couple of examples are we have a synonym service that's, that's out of Bing. So you call an API and it hands mm -hmm. you back a bunch of synonyms, which doesn't sound like a big deal until you realize that synonyms in terms of understanding language mm -hmm. for search and query and all that stuff is like super, super, super important, right? And so that's an example where we, we have um, that database, which is actually derived out of our Bing crawls. Right? And so we're able to drive that data set with machine learning, open that up as a, as a database basically and offer that out to people. Um, there's, there are other examples that are like that in terms of things that are emerging, um, but whether it's data that's, that's being pulled together by Bing or data that's, that we have because of our phone assets or, or Windows or Xbox Live or Office 365, <laughs> there, as you know, there is, there is a lot of data and 
we are working at an industry level to figure out what data is relevant for verticals, right, across various industries. It, you know, I'll give you an example. There is um, tremendous value in, in package shipping company data to banks. It's like, well, that's a little odd. Why is that? Well, because if you're doing small loans in retail, in terms of how many packages are coming in and off the front door is a really interesting data signal as, about, as to whether or not those loans are going to be valuable in the future, et cetera, right? One of these connections that wasn't obvious at first, but once you dig into the details, it turns out it makes a ton of sense. Um, so we're doing a bunch of work like that and, and trying to understand the patterns that are emerging in on an industry basis. Um, another, another example is we have a, a catalog of public data sources. And so you can, you can go into Power Query, which is one of the Power BI tools that's integrated into Excel. And you can type in things. One of my favorites is um, King County, which is the um, county for where Seattle is, right, in Washington State. You know, King County Health Inspection Data. And, and because of the work we do in conjunction with being to find interesting data sources, we have a, a, a public data source catalog that includes an entry for where to find King County health records, and then you find all this interesting information on restaurants um, in terms of how they were inspected, um, yeah. which is really interesting when you put it up on a map. Um, <laughs> it just it teaches you a lot as a consumer. <laughs> but you can get from being curious about that to seeing a, a, a globe with stacked views on how many inspections and how many of them were of the interesting kind as a consumer versus not. In inspections of interest. Yeah, inspections <laughs> of interest. You can get to that result in under a minute with the tools. And before that, how would you even begin Blind, to figure this right? out? Yeah, right. Quinn, talk about the, you mentioned Bing. So let's talk about Azure. You guys have the huge back end, big cloud. I see a lot of things going on with that, um, which will be subject to our cloud show when we go to AWS reInvent and OpenStack and other, other cloud events will be at. But this is the data show. But uh, <laughs> you mentioned Bing. Azure services Bing, and so there's a ton of infrastructure that's servicing Bing, I assume, I, and I've heard, um, I'm not sure if this, what the official statement is, but, but that's well known in the industry, that's a lot of stuff you're doing with Bing internally. What have you guys learned, and what are you guys taking out of your experience in dealing with that massive uh, engine in Bing, because there's a lot of different, it's all the issues are there on the search engine side. Say data sources, mm -hmm. diversity, size of data. You mentioned metadata management with crawling and taking those synonyms and you know, macros, these kinds of concepts. Mm -hmm. um, and you take that into an environment where it's much more smaller scale. You got to kind of package some big concepts that Bing has done and bring it down to the, to the big data world. Um, is it easy to do? Are you guys doing that? Can you share some insight into what you've learned and some of the best practices in being a, a supplier to Bing, which could be a proxy for essentially large enterprises? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the first thing we're really doing with, with that learning is applying it to Azure and, and having that whole cycle really work. Managing large scale systems at the at cloud scale, as you can imagine, it's, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a big engineering challenge, big operational challenge. And so that cycle of learning between you know, um, uh, uh, the work that we're, that we're doing across all of Azure and our online properties is is a, is a virtuous cycle. And you know, as you may imagine, they also have, in the data space, they have needs for analytics and, and visualization tools and reaching everyone in, in every business, whether it's, whether it's the Xbox business or the Office business or the Bing business, with insights that ultimately help them shape, shape what they do. Um, and so we're sort of very fortunate to have this very strong first party muscle um, that lets us shape the platform and, and get use out of the platform to help inform how to really scale. And make what do you think are work. blind spots for the industry out there? Looking back, I'm not saying that you're going to say anything bad about Microsoft, but like if you could share advice to folks out there, saying knowing what you guys have known and experienced at Bing, out to the rest of the market around social data, because that's a big topic here, social yeah. data, which is essentially consumer data. Yeah. You know, what they're touching on their mobile phones, how that's coming mm -hmm. back into a data center. What would you share with folks out there that's potential blind spots that they need to be aware of? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give you just one, one quick uh, story about this. I literally met with two very large hotel conglomerates in the course of, of, of a business week, okay? Um, I think there was an intervening weekend, but across you know, several days, I met with two in our, in our um, customer briefing centers back in, back in Redmond. And it was a very, I walked out of those two meetings realizing just what was really at stake, right? One customer had, had plumbed their hotels with telemetry, with, um, with RFIDs, and so they're giving, you know, their, the hotel key you get, it's not the magnetic stripe, instead it's the proximity thing, which as a consumer feels really cool or in high tech, right? Um, but what they don't tell you is that there was a, there's actually a lot of proximity sensors in the hotel. So they kind of like, who's going to the gym, who's not? There's a lot of information that they can collect as a result of, of having these things plumbed this way. They've also embraced social in a, in, a, in a very deep way, and so they understand 
what the sentiment is, what people are saying, what people's hobbies are. And so they're able to really customize and tailor the experience for everybody at scale programmatically. And I'm like, wow, these people are really headed somewhere. You know, a few days later, I met with another, um, another one of these um, conglomerates, and they were nowhere with this. And I'm sitting there, and I'm watching them, and I'm like, you are kind of in trouble. I mean, competitively, you're not going to be able to differentiate. You're not going to be able to compete because you're not already embracing all of this telemetry. And they don't think of it. I mean, like, the, the swiping data from a hotel key, like, it, they think of it as operational data. They didn't think of it as an advantage for them in personalization of experience for their guests. And these are two worlds apart. And so the, the thing I would just tell people is, look at, what the, we'll look at what the big companies are doing and embracing, and look at what's behind that. And eventually, what's, what seems high scale to the few will end up being pedestrian to the many, right, uh, over time. So talk about the, um, the data center. We were talking with Wayne Disco earlier about their, their positioning, which resonates well with some of the enterprise customers. We've talked about the data center, whether it's software-defined data center, whether it's the future of cloud around uptime. Yeah. I mean, we've, you know, we've, we've heard the stories about Netflix going down and people, you know, that's an obvious consumer example, but like there, there are issues around big data being up and running, having high availability, sure. having this continuous operations. Um, where is the state of the market with that, in that area? And general cloud availability. Yeah, just, and all in, that. just in the big data world, I mean, you know, they have a unique value proposition, when Disco, around, hey, if data center fails, we have complete failover. Yeah. Uh, and that's unique. I mean, not a lot of people, you know, talking about that. What's your take on that? Well, look, uh, pro property of cloud, property of commercial cloud, property like Azure has these capabilities built into it, right? And you have to. We, we, you don't, you don't get to run a business like Bing, where if you had a data center fail you're out of business that day, right? You, yeah. you don't get to do that. It's a you zero fail, it's no to zero you, tolerance. You do not, I mean, you know, you need to talk about an, a, a, a rambunctious group of users, you can't take Xbox Live down, right. like ever, <laughs> ever right? Ever um, In fact, that would cause a riot in my own house, right? <laughs> no, so, no, no. Bing uh, could go down for a little bit, but not <laughs> Xbox Live. Yeah. 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 Xbox Live. A little slow query, but Xbox, no lag, yeah. no lagging. Right, you know? so you, you, don't, you don't earn the reputation that we have, and you don't get the results that we have in, in those businesses without having yeah. solved that problem. Yeah. Right, and so yes, you know, we we've had to of course embrace the the global scale and, and availability and data center management, and it's 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 you know it's a lot of engineering work, but it's a tremendous power once you get to that scale, right? When things actually work turnkey, and creating a new business, right? So like when we did Power Q and A, we weren't worried about oh like data centers, where are we going to find those, and it's all just turnkey for us, right? Right, and you get a lot of engineering power and agility out of that. Quentin, well, on that note, we're going to uh, take, a, take a break here, but I want get to you, get you the final word. Maybe we'll do some crowd chats with you guys uh, in the future, because this is a really hot topic, this enterprise grade. This is really important. Uh, I want to get your final thoughts on kind of what you're going to see come out of the show and beyond. What's going to happen next? But how do you see this evolving? Obviously, people are starting to settle into these, starting to see some tech, get some solid ground, still yeah. some areas to work on, a lot of white spaces, still opportunities, but how, how do yeah. you see it kind of settling out and yeah, going forward? Yeah, and even just listening to the, to the talks this morning, I would say that there's a, there's a sort of consistent meme of how is, this, how is this really being embraced by business for results, right? Um, and sometimes early in, in, in the evolution of technology, you, everyone's exploring what the tech, the tech is capable of, and I think there's now a focus shifting to what it's going to impact and how it's going to change businesses operationally on a day-to-day -day basis uh, going forward. And so there's a lot of interest in you know, real time and finishing the last mile of, of analytics and intelligence and all that stuff to the users. Because I think it is, there is a shift now on to what greater purpose. Okay, this is theCUBE, we're live in New York City. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We're live for Big Data, NYC, Hadoop World, Strata Commerce, all the detailed coverage here. We'll be right back with our next guest after this break. <laughs>